Hey folks, JD here with another update. We're going to have a look today at the water tower from the uh, Foregrounds American Legends range. Um, I was actually out here today, the back of the property where we are, and I wanted to try and find a water tower for the backdrop. But these guys here uh, decided they were going to photo bomb me, and they were all spread out across there, and they've they've jumped in. Uh, so they've jumped in to join us today. And um, so let's go back to the uh, shed and we'll have a look at the water tower from foreground. So unlike other foreground kits which come flat packed in plastic, this one actually came in a cardboard box with the American Legends uh, branding on that. And so let's have a close look at the water tower. So the water tower itself, um, pretty simple build actually. Uh, most of these parts come uh, pre-painted and I've, I've sort of sprayed over that as well but um, the MDF is pre-painted on both sides. Uh, so the bottom build pretty pretty simple again putting these uh, the stand together it has these interlocking kind of pieces where my thumb is one there and one there which sort of keep all that aligned uh, and then you just sort of glue the uh, square platform on the top there's no struts for the ladder the ladder just goes straight on the side so that's incredibly simple um, and that'll give you the the full stand ready to go this next piece at the top here the actual tank is a series of, of rings and then a piece of card and that's really all there is to it so if we look down in there you can see it's quite thin I have sprayed that since uh, so it's not the original colouring and if we just grab this is the card uh, for the tank itself and again uh, very flexible it's a it's quite a quality textured card this stuff it's um, you know it's sort of uh, I mean it breaks and tears easy but it it folds nice as well it sort of kinks as it folds a little bit which is kind of what you want for the tank. So this actual piece around here uh, is folded and it is scored uh, or etched in where the planks of uh, wood would be so it kind of folds as you go around it's folding on those actual seams so it's, it's got a sort of uh, a jagged or kinked kind of uh, look keeping those planks straight so you're not actually bending the plank itself you're sort of bending it at the scores. Uh, the rings. Now, the rings come as a kind of half ring, and you can see where my thumb is there, there is a, a little notch to go into the card, and then one at the top just there. So you get a whole series of these, uh, you get about eight in total, and if I can find, it's probably going to be tricky to see. But down in there, you should be able to see about there where my finger is uh, the the inside notch. So the card has little holes in it, which just slot in. So let's move around to that join in particular. And you can kind of um, actually, it's very hard to see, but the join of those two rings goes into a small notch like that. I think that's actually it's here. There you go. That was the middle. So you can possibly just see. A small line there uh, where those rings sort of go in and it's a little bit tricky to sort of hold and clamp this one you can't I couldn't get my clamps further enough so I was constantly coming back to it and just pressing as I go around and uh, letting the the white glue kind of set it just gets absorbed by the card so it sets quite faster um, than, than normal so Rethinking this again same problems as before it is a little it's, it's not as bad as the windmill in terms of knocking that over um, It will go over. It's not going to break. In fact, that just had a little bit of a bounce and So a couple of things there, you know, my first thought with these rings was maybe they should just be uh, perfectly round and then you just slide them over the top um, in hindsight, I think they've gone for the right decision here, making them half. It allows you to glue them on better because you come at it from the side rather than trying to slip something down over the card and getting glue everywhere. Um, and also, I think that little bit of give in those joins uh, when it does things like, you know, falls over and lands on that side like that um, is certainly going to help those from 
uh, stopping those from actually breaking. So, yeah. Um, the only thing I would do differently with this build is again, I'm coming back to the same issue of these things being a little top heavy. So I might make a platform that goes underneath this that it sets on. Same issues with the windmill in terms of cover. Uh, people asking questions, you know, is is there cover through the actual uh, stand itself? So again, I kind of support these uh, so it's a little bit clearer where the cover is and barricade them a little bit. So a little bit of set dressing and a base uh, for this would, would go a long way. And I think reinforcing the bottom of these stands with something a little heavier down here. I've been, I've been thinking of a couple of different ideas of ways I would do that. Um, a bit of stainless steel rod or something heavy that I could glue on the inside just along the inside of the, the bottom of that uh, to give it a bit more weight at the bottom. And another rethink if I was redoing this. I'm not a great fan of this kind of etched um, fake plank that foreground does. Uh, I find it a little bit uh, too uniform. Um, so I mean it, it's quick and easy to the table in terms of getting this it's pre-painted so bang you put it together it's on the table it's done. Um, I think in hindsight if I built this again and I'll just I will show you where the card slots in there we go slots into the bottom of that so that it keeps its shape the card slots into the base. In hindsight, if I was to build this again, I would most likely do these planks myself. I would actually uh, cut those on the scroll saw, get the wire brush out, um, and do myself a whole heap of thin planks, and lose just lose the card completely, and do these uh, not so uniform, um, yeah, in my own style. That's something that I would add. And the last thing is, you know, getting up into here easy enough with the ladder in terms of gameplay. I'd like to see a way to get inside the actual tank. So you'd either do a resin cover or a perspex cover um, that sits up. So I would have, um, I'll probably build in some some ridges on the side to sort of allow a support for a, a piece of perspex about there. Um, that makes it look like the tank is full of water. Especially in Dracula's America, there's a few aquatic rules and things like that. So uh, hiding um, an objective inside there, things like that, uh, something that could happen easily enough. The other way to go would be to com uh, completely uh, ruin this in terms of making it derelict and then literally just cut out a whole section on the bottom here where you can just walk straight in and possibly one up higher on there. Um, and I think it also would do with a couple of little, cl uh, a small ladder or some climbing mounts, uh, steps that would get you up to the top of the tank. What it doesn't have, which I was disappointed with, was um, no main piping coming off the side. Like, so I, I can't put it next to my train track and I can't put it next to my train and say, this is for filling up the steam engine, um, which foreground also does. So uh, that's something I would have to scratch build and it's something I would have liked in a kit because this was this was pretty simple and I think it could have uh, had a little bit more in it. And then we come to the pipe and pump which goes underneath. It's very very simple and it adds a little bit of a look to it but most of the time it just becomes irrelevant. Uh, I don't think it adds enough for the amount of work that went into putting this together. I still haven't finished. There's still some more supports to put on the piping. Uh, it's plastic so it sort of changes the glues up a bit. You've got to use super glue for this part. Um, that one there's already come a little bit loose. Yeah, so for the amount of work that I've put in to getting this right and cutting it to the right size so that I can put it under the tank um, where really models aren't going and, and moving to, uh, I, I'm probably going to leave that out completely. Uh, or I might grab the windmill where to me it makes a whole lot more sense uh, to have it underneath the windmill um, and I think that just looks that looks better to me. I'm, I'm used to seeing windmills with 
with the pump on the ground and for tanks I'm not used to, well in Australia especially, uh, used to seeing the, the piping in the middle. Um, I'm used to seeing it come off the side and then down. So there's some changes I'd probably like to make, um, but that's it for the American Legends water tower from Foreground. A bit of a recap and a bit of a rethink. Uh, if you've liked the video, like and subscribe.